Hey guys and welcome back. So in today's video we're gonna talk uh, a little bit about the docker and all the benefits that you can get out of it. And uh, it's actually quite an extensive topic, the docker itself and uh, all of the stuff that you can do in a docker. You can run a docker swarm and you can uh, configure your, uh, let's say, production services in the docker and do a lot of the interesting things. But uh, I'm not an expert in all of that. I won't be able to, let's say, uh, make a comprehensive guide about how you should scale your Docker instances or what you should keep in mind uh, when you are running some Docker stuff in a production to make sure about a performance and, and all of the similar things. But if you are not an expert in this field, to, it doesn't mean that you don't have to you don't have to use docker at all because i personally am using this only for some testing purposes for some troubleshooting for for those cases when you need to test something out when you need to test some sort of the software application uh, which is uh, let's say a bit of painful to configure right let's say if we want to install and we need to test something on um i don't know ubuntu or debian machine and uh, we don't have it so we need to download an image uh, which will take some sort of the time uh, we need to install a virtual machine then we need to find out how to actually to install the software that we're talking about which might be like very simple steps in a couple of minutes and it might also uh, be more complicated task so the greatest benefit of the docker is that even without any extensive knowledge you can spin up your uh, applications that you want to play around with that you want to test and troubleshoot in just a matter of a couple of minutes and uh, even even on some some other distribution so if you need ubuntu red hat CentOS, uh, alpine uh, debian whatever else if there is a docker container created for it you can spit it up in a couple of uh, minutes or even seconds so uh let's get started right and uh, yeah in my installation uh sorry like this yeah so in my installation i have a clean centos 8 machine and uh, previously I was using for a long time just the CentOS 7 and all of my docker was configured in the CentOS 7 so I will be also doing like a clean installation of the docker community edition in the CentOS 8 so it should be the same steps for the RHEL 8 uh, and then we're gonna actually try to spin up some uh, real containers so first of all we need to install the docker community edition which is free um, and anybody can get it and to do that we need need to first of all add a repository official uh, docker community edition repository from which we're going to download um, docker community edition so dnf config manager add repo and the url to the repository uh, since we're going to be doing some installation stuff then if it's going to take a bit too much time then it'll just uh, fast forward till the results so then when we added the repo we need to install a docker uh, minus CA is uh, community edition uh, latest release so DNF install docker community edition and uh, well this step might take uh, I'm not sure how much time perhaps a couple of the seconds so so there we go and yeah I've just fast forward the installation process uh, but it was just the previous command to DNF install uh, which finally finished and we have a docker community edition up and running on our system and the only thing that we have less left is to type uh, systemctl uh, start docker and if you want to let's say auto start it after each uh, restart of your system because uh, i am personally doing this on just uh, local host uh, virtual machine that i'm using for all of my videos and and and, and the test so systemctl enable the docker uh, to create a symlink to start it automatically after we spin up our virtual machine and that's it so right now we have our docker community edition up and running and then we can actually start playing around so then it's uh, the main question is so what do we need what kind of application what kind of software do we need to spin up and let's start with the with the most simplest example let's say we need to install mysql and uh, let's leave the version of the mysql 
as it is right now and uh, also the operating system on which we want to run it uh, we'll talk about it uh, shortly but first of all we are interested in the URL uh, hub.docker.com in which we can find all of the information about the containers that we are going to be using in uh, our Docker environment to actually spin those up and uh, get access to some of the applications. So Docker Hub and uh, okay, so search for grid content uh, as example, MySQL. So that's exactly what we need. We need a MySQL and as you can see, there are already a couple of options like we have a MySQL, MariaDB, Percana, uh, PHP MyAdmin, the Server Enterprise Edition and a lot, a lot of the MySQL router uh, cluster and yeah, a lot of the different things. But we're going to be taking as uh, our example, the MySQL, which is official image, which has 10 uh, million plus downloads and 10K plus stars. So click on the MySQL and uh, then we basically have uh, all of the required information here. So what we can go through is uh, supported tags and respective Docker file links. So first of all, we are able to choose what sort of version of our MySQL do we want to spit up. It could be very old uh, MySQL 5.6 or even 5. It could be also the MySQL 8.0.22 or we can just use a tag latest and at any moment when we will be actually running this command, it will pull up the latest available MySQL version for our Docker container. Um, quick reference like where to file issues, supported architectures, uh, published uh, image artifact details, and uh, it's not that relevant for, let's say, actual uh, testing. But uh, how to use this image? And this applies to all of the containers that you might be want to try out. And any application will have, uh, let's say, different Docker run command to actually spin it up and start using it. So in case of MySQL, we can see a simple uh, starting uh, command to spin up our MySQL instance, which is Docker run then dash dash name where we can actually call this uh, docker container as something then we are passing the environment uh, variables and we'll get back to them again shortly so mysql root password this will be used as a root password in our mysql container that we're gonna spin and then minus d so it's gonna be uh, detached which means that it's gonna run let's say in the background aside from our uh, current shell and then mysql uh, colon and tag so tag is the place where you can actually define what sort of diversion do you want to run will it be 8022 or just 57 or maybe latest so always fill up the latest version uh, we can skip as uh, this, but you can also check like how you can connect uh, to MySQL from the MySQL command line, uh, the Docker stack example, but uh, that's uh, let's say outside uh, outside of the scope for this video. Uh, container shell access and viewing the logs, we're going to talk about it, uh, using a custom MySQL configuration file, and uh, let's say most important to... Um, very simple thing so environment variables these are the parameters that we can provide in our docker run command as minus uh, where it is as uh, minus e which means environment variables and these are all the options that we can use and as you can see one was already example in our command mysql root password but we can also create a database we can create a user with some sort of the password allow empty passwords or not random root password uh one-time password uh and a DB skip uh, time zone info. Um, so any application or software that you're going to be running through um, Docker containers will have their own environment variables. That's why it's very important that let's say you found out that you need something and uh, let me just uh, open another tab of a Docker hub. Let's say we want to spin up a WordPress. 
That's it. We don't want to install something, configure databases, PHP, whatever else. We just want to spin a container with a WordPress. Uh, and then again, we need to check. So see, it has quite a lot more tags uh, with a PHP, Apache, uh, FPM, uh, CLI, a lot of the different tags that we can use, a lot of different environment variables aside from the uh, MySQL, the Docker secrets. And well, this is basically more complicated because it involves uh, web engine, uh, PHP, and also a database. Let's get, uh, let's stick with this, our MySQL example. So let's actually do this. So just copy paste Docker run name. Uh, I will paste it here. Docker run name, let's say, uh, not a sum MySQL, but uh, YouTube, MySQL root password. Uh, secret, I will remove dash secret uh, password, detach and my SQL tag, I will use latest. I want to download the latest version of our my SQL. Click enter. First of all, what we get is unable to find image MySQL latest locally because it's the first time when I am running it. So what's happening next? Uh, our Docker Community Edition is connecting to the Docker Hub and actually pulling all of the containers that are currently published here. First time, this will take like some matter of the time to actually download everything and spin up the container. Next time, uh, when let's say you will be uh, restarting your virtual machine or whatever else and you again want to start this docker container it will be like this like literally a second because it's already here in the system so it's already up and uh, we can type docker ps so i will also guide you through let's say most uh, uh, generic and simple and most commonly used commands for the docker so docker ps we can see that we have one container up and running, uh, which it has container ID. Uh, the image is MySQL latest and the name is a YouTube, just like we define. There are two ports, which are basically the mappings from uh, port 3306 default to the container port 33060 and created 30 seconds ago. So that's it. We actually have a MySQL right now spinning on the system. And uh, what we can do is, uh, um, let me stop systemctl, stop MariaDB. I don't, I'm not sure, maybe I have my own instance from previous videos right now that I will stop it. So we can docker exec minus it and just copy paste the container ID. So this is the beginning of the command. And then what we want to do, we want to log in with a bash uh, to the CLI of the specific container, not to the virtual machine in which I'm sitting right now, but to the container that we just created. Like this, see the initial of the of the shell line changed i am inside of my container right now and then i can actually try to log in to my database access denied right using password no uh, to the root user so i will define uh minus p to actually be able to enter the password and it is uh actually forgot what it was secret secret password no uh my no, sorry, dink my secret password. What was the, let's check in the, let's actually exit and uh, my secret password, that's how it was. So again, enter in the Docker container like this in a bash, my SQL minus P prompt my dash secret password. And there we go. So we are inside a database. My SQL uh, show databases. Uh, there are just the default databases, and we can actually create database testing character set. Let's say UTF eight. There we go. We created a database uh, testing. We can use it, and uh, there are no tables, so we are free to some sort of the tests. And then if, let's say, we can exit from it, let's say we want to check the logs of our database. So we can again type the Docker PS and type Docker logs, in this case, and container ID. Docker logs, container ID. There we go. We can see all of the logs, how our uh, MySQL server was started and how it is running. Are there any errors or not? So we can see that the version is 8.0.22, which is the latest on the current moment. And uh, okay, if we 
let's say we don't want to use it anymore so we did our internal tests and we are ready to get rid of it so docker uh, I think it was stop and container ID done so docker ps it's not here but it's actually still on our system and if we wanted to delete it then we need to type docker system prune minus a for all then it will prompt as uh, do you agree to actually uh, remove stopped containers networks not used by at least one container images with without at least one container associated with them and we just downloaded uh, my sql image uh, and all the build cache so yes i agree i already made all the tests with my sql so click yes deleted uh total reclaimed space almost half of the gig and that's it we still have a docker ps we can try to start something else from our docker hub uh, which uh, may be uh, let's say redis cache like uh, this one uh, usually all of them in the docker hubs uh, have uh, the sample uh, command how you can start it so docker run name some redis minus uh, d as a detach and redis so type in uh, no image find locally again uh, so we should see that it is pulling from the library of the redis again downloading uh, taking some sort of the time extracting and uh, good so docker ps we have our do our redis uh, software running we can type docker logs and there we go so it's running no config file specified uh the port 6379 and we can do our internal tests basically nowadays like any um software any popular applications also have their docker containers so even if you don't have all the knowledge required to um to let's say spin those up and prepare them for the production for actual load and make sure that it's going to be running long term you can always use this for your internal tests you will save a lot of the time because you won't have to create uh, separate virtual machines and uh, read the documentation like how can I actually install it what sort of uh, configuration files do I need to fill where to find them just one command wait a couple of seconds or a minute and you're good to go to use it so thank you guys I hope that you find this useful uh, I hope that you're going to use this in your uh, internal testings and uh, don't forget to click the like button, subscribe button and we're definitely going to see you in the next video. So thank you for now and goodbye.